In this video, we are going to be building the front end with the Vue.js. So we are going to create a Vue.js project and uh, we are going now to uh, combine it together with our Laravel application. Now, so if you are just watching this video for the first time, I've been doing, um, I'm doing a full stack application that is a full e-commerce whereby we are using Laravel 10 and Vue.js 3. So this is now the Vue.js uh, documentation. So we are going to install now Vue and that's what we are going to use for our front end. Now I need you to head over to the NPM um, whereby I will need you to, to install the NPM which you are also going to do together as well as Node.js because you are also going to use Node.js here. So now to create a Vue.js project, uh, so you, you, may, you need to make sure that you have the Node.js and NPM installed. So these are the websites. So we have this one and we have this. Now when I go to my text editor, whereby I'm using a VS Code, I can type, for example, node then dash V, and I can see I'm using version 16 um, of Node.js. Uh, so the same case, let me clear this and go to go to NPM and then version here. You can see the C. So remember this ones they are being run uh, globally because I'm not in any directory here. So I have NPM and Node.js installed. So if they are not installed, you can now download them in this from this website by coming here and downloading this. That is for Windows and then for Linux, you also need to, to identify. So for example, you just need to check for Linux and then of course if you're using Linux, it would auto detect for your um, OS. All right now, so we are still we are going to use uh, Vue.js. Now once you, you have the Node.js and NPM installed, that is these two. So the next item here is to begin from now the installing the npm uh, install global then the, that is in short to install the view cli globally so here i'm going to clear this like this and then now here what i want us to do is npm install and then here we are going to have a uh, view sorry view and then slash and then cli so what is going to happen here so what we are doing here the gif the G flag here uh, installs the package globally, which makes the view available um, available within the system wide. So that's what we have. So let's install this quickly. So it's going to take some time. So let me come back when it is done. Now, so we have the um, this view CLI installed. So once that is done, now we can. Now the view command should be available for us. So here when I run the view and then I run the, the version here. So let's check. So now we can see now we have our view CLI, which is 5.0.8. So now after installing the view CLI, now we can create the new, uh, that is the new Vue.js project. And here, let me just clear this. So here, what I'm going to do is, um, uh, actually, let me create it in a, in a place. Let me just do this. So now I've gone to I've gone to one of my local disks, which is a S, and then ZAM, and then HDDocs. So what I'm going to do here here is where I'm going to create my Vue.js project. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to run create, and then here I'm going to call it e-commerce. Then here it's going to be front end like this. So view create e-commerce frontend remember now we have our view cli working so i'm going to run that and then it's going to create for us so it will just take a minute all right now we are presented with a few options here now the the options are as you can see because they are they are for setting up view uh, view.js project within our application so um so here we want to use the latest the latest version of view so we want to go with the view 3 Babel, and then eslint so the preset for example the first one uh, so the first preset which is uh, this one uh, and it includes the view 3 
uh, and also sets up Babel and yes, lint for us. So what will happen here is the Babel is a JavaScript uh, compiler that will let us use the latest JavaScript features. And then ESLint is a tool for identifying and fixing problems in our JavaScript code. So the tools are quite helpful in uh, modern JavaScript development. So for example, when we look at ESLint, it will help us to fix some problems when we encounter them in our JavaScript code. So we are going to go with the first one, uh, not view two, but the first one, the default one. So I'll click enter after choosing that one. And now it's going now to install that for us, which will take a while. Now we have our view, uh, that is our Vue.js project created. So here we can now cd in. So let me just uh, copy that command there and then paste it here. So now I'm in e-commerce front end. And then here I can run as they say. So I can run npm serve and we should be able to run our project at a local development server. All right guys, so this is the server that uh, that is running our project. So here I just need to open it like that. And we have our now our Vue.js app installed. All right. So the next part is just to, let me just do this. So I can, uh, let me just control, then let me just do the code so that we can open the project now. Okay, so let me close that one. Let me be left with this one. I'll also open the terminal. Okay, so this is our view now, view project. And uh, that's where we're going to begin from. So let me uh, go for git bash like this. Okay, now, since we, we have now our Vue.js project created, so the next item is to install Axios because you're going to use Axios to make HTTP requests to our Laravel uh, API. Remember, it's the one that we have developed in the previous tutorials. So here, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to run this npm uh, install Axios. Somebody may be asking Axios is for what? I introduced Axios in the first, in the start of this tutorial. So you may want to go and check that out, what it is. Okay, so I can see it is already installed. So now once we have Axios, the next part here is I want us to establish a base URL for our Axios and Axios uh, API endpoints. So here on this folder here, which is called source here, um, I want us to create a file. And this file here, we're going to call it Axios.js like this. And then now here within this file in itself, we are going to have this particular uh, code here. So the first part is that we're going to import the going to import the Axios Axios like this. Now what we're doing here, we're importing the Axios library so that we can make the HTTP requests. Okay, so now from there, we are going to do something here. Now here we are going to create a new instance of Axios with default configuration. So we are going to have a, a variable here, const, then we'll have instance like this, and then you're going to say equals to Axios, and then you're going to have dot create like this. Then inside here, we are going to set the base URL for all the Axios requests. So base URL here, we mean a URL which we are going to append it so that when we are making any Axios request, we are able to return a JSON response. So I'm, uh, I'm going to show you as we, as we continue, if you are new to this. So here we're going to have uh, this. So we're going to have HTTP and then HTTP and then we're going to have this. So we're going to have a local host because this is the URL that we're going to establish. So we're going to have this, then the 8,000. Remember, this is just the, the API that we have within the, our Laravel application. So that is, it's called a base URL, which will help us to, uh, 
to make Axios request. And then here down here, we're going to have export default. So we're going to have that and then instance. So now this one, what it does, it is exporting the created instance for use in other parts of the application. So we are going to be using it in most of our uh, our components and files so that we can make the the it available in other parts of our application. So that's that's the part you're going to have. So this is what you're going to have here so that we can make the HTTP request using our Axios. So I will save that one and uh, we are done there. So that is the base URL. The next part here in this tutorial before I wind up is uh, we're going to make components or I'm going to create components. Now here you can see we have components folder here and then the default component is what we, we are able to, to see here. So for example here, um, you can see here we have what we call the hello world and within the hello world here, this is what we are presented with when we run our application uh, coming from, of course, from the view app, which is the one that represents the, is the, is the standard presentation of our, of our app. And then of course we have the component whereby it is sourcing the data from and so forth. So here, you can see there's something here. So what we need to do here is I'm going to create different components that we're going to use so that, for example, remember in our Laravel application, we did things such as I've been able to add something, delete all the CRUD functionality we did. So here I'm going to click on this one here, and then I want you to click on this icon for file here and the first part here I want to create, I want you to create is the product list. So this one is the one that is going to list all the products for us. So we're going to have the product list like that, which is going to list all for us all the products. Still on the same uh, components folder, I want you to create the product uh, details. So the product details dot view, this one is going to View, enable us to view details of a single product. So that is on that part there. So on the same part, still on the same, we also now going to create what we call the add a product a dot view like that. So this one is responsible for adding a new product. Remember we did this one in Laravel, whereby we added a product. So what we're going to do here, we're going to call the API, and then we're going to insert data into our database using an API within our Laravel application. Okay, so here the last one is edit and then here, so this is edit um, it view like that. So edit view is responsible for editing an existing product. And uh, from the start of this tutorial, I showed you the demo product, uh, the demo project, and we were able to edit. Um, I, I was able to show you that. So that's what we have in this tutorial. So in the next tutorial, we'll now begin, before we now go to this respective components here, we are going first to start with the login and registration components, whereby we are going to first undo the login and registration. And then afterwards, now we are going to the components within our application.